First, I'd like to thank you for having me and also for the funding for my SARA project, which was great. So North Coast Lamb Co-op, we're going to be talking about ultrasounding today. And I suppose the theme of my presentation is you can't manage what you can't measure. So the objective of the project was to provide quality lamb to local restaurants and groceries, to recruit producers to participate in selling lamb locally and to assist members in producing the required um, product demanded, which is consistent quality lambs. Now about three or four years ago, the um, American sheep industry did a study they call the Roadmap, and they found some um, problems in our industry. For example, the average American only eats about one pound of lamb per year. 70% of all the lamb consumed in the United States is coming from outside of the country. But one of the things that they found was that um, we have too many, too much inconsistency in lamb. And so you would have one lamb going to market which has a great loin eye and lots of meat and another one that has a small loin eye and, and lots of back fat. So there's a lot of inconsistency in the industry and we need to solve that problem. So I think I just mentioned these, these bullet items but the excess fat and inconsistency are probably, it was determined to be the biggest detraction from the lamb um, uh, premier status and buying slaughter animals on weight is a problem. Everybody finds it much easier to just drop off your lambs in, in Ohio at the Mount Hope auction house than to try to direct market. So you have a lot of inconsistency and when you look at an animal you can't tell the quality of that meat sometimes. Some people say they can, some people can go and you know uh, do their um, uh, body score and think that they know what they're getting, but there's a lot of inconsistency. And so buying at weight and yield provides no incentive for any producer to start producing that value-added product that the American lamb industry feels that we need to be moving towards. This is another image from the American sheep industry's um, roadmap market. And as you see here, they're talking about marketing lamb and some direct marketing. And specifically what I'm going to be talking about today is our project, which we focused on a co-op of marketing. The average size of a sheep farm in our state of Ohio is about 40 head. So even if you're lambing at 200 percent, um, a lot of these restaurants that approach you and say we'd like to have lamb for our, our business, they'd like 500 lambs. Well, if you've got 40 ewes lambing at 200 percent, which most people lamb at 160 to 180 percent, there's no way you can supply that demand. So how can we get farmer A, B, and C all producing the same quality of lamb and putting them together to market to give a quality consistent product. Again, the typical thing is the auction, the, another problem that we found is that the auction houses, all these lambs are being shipped to packers out of state. And we know that when local food is consumed locally, that means more money stays in the, our local community. So that was another one of our goals here. And based on the multiplier, that can generate quite a lot in economic development locally. So I'm going to give, there were three farms involved in this project, but for time's sake, I'm just going to talk about my farm. Um, we are one of the Cuyahoga Valley National um, Park farms located between the city of Akron and Cleveland and Peninsula, Ohio. And one of the things that we did was um, in the project is we reviewed um, all of the uh, data on who consumes lamb, um, you know, w the reasons for it, et cetera. And based on the literature review, we were able to determine, based on population density and demographics of who lived within a one hour, half hour, and 15 minute drive of my farm, what my potential market would be for lamb. So you can see um, here, um, just in, with a 15 minute drive from my farm, I've got, uh, you know, 769 people who would be buying from a farmer's market and 384 based on extrapolating this research that would be buying from the local market let alone restaurants. So the point we're trying to illustrate here is you know knowing who your market is, um, knowing what your demand is and clearly there's more demand, potential demand and then look at here you know we have we have close to um, 3.6 million people with a one-hour drive of our farm 
And the village of Peninsula, which is in the heart of the national park, is also a tourist area. So we have um, 2.6 million people that village, visit the village every year. So a lot of potential to market lamb. How do we meet this demand? And what is our competition? Our biggest competition is not other producers. We need to come together to market our lamb, but our biggest competition is Australia and New Zealand. And again, 70% of the land is, is, that's being consumed in the States is coming from those countries. Now, the interesting thing was is that um, um, we have locally a better uh, loin eye. Now, in research on the yield of meat in lamb, they've determined that the loin eye between the 12th and 13th vertebrae is the best indicator of overall the quality of meat and lamb that you're going to have producing out of your um, lamb product. So um, take note of this because this is what we're going to be using in this project. Again, before I mention that we have too many breeds and too many producers, and so you know, what we need to be working with in the industry, which I just mentioned is, you know, this is what the, produce, the consumers want and this is what some of the producers are supplying. So how can we move from here to here or how can we have a group of people market together to have this quality um, product? So our solution was to use this, this muscle eye measurement as an attribute necessary to come together as producers to sell to restaurants at the higher value. And so we're using carcass ultrasounding of lamb crops for the market acceptance into our group. And if people aren't up to that speed yet, perhaps we can help them market their lamb to another market, maybe as um, you know, lamb stew or ground lamb or something like that, and then help them bring them along so that they can um, um, uh, produce quality lamb with the higher producers. So we borrowed this measurement from seed stock producers. So one of the many um, things that seed stock producers are measuring when they're trying to say why their lamb is better to buy for breeding stock than someone else's is they're measuring things like birth weight and weaning weight and you know was it a twin and and of course um, you know the, the the muscle eye carcass weight etc. So we focused here on the the rib eye uh, the loin eye between the 12th and 13th vertebrae. And the nice thing about the ultrasounding is you don't have to kill the animal to see what you have. So you can actually go in there and ultrasound and find out what quality of lamb you're producing. And the good news is that while maternal characteristics are hard to, to encourage in, in the lamb industry, um, the, the uh, terminal meat um, characteristics are the easiest to develop in your um, flock. So um, for this project, luckily I had already gone out to um, and gotten certified as a National Sheep Improvement um, uh, certified car ultrasound carcass scanner. And this is just what the scanner looks like with an ultrasound uh, machine here. Um, and you basically, the sheep has to be shorn and um, you provide contact on there and then you grab an image on the screen, um, marking that so you match the ear tag and you have the weight of the animal. And then at a later point in time after you've done the entire flock, or in our case what we did was a random sample, then you can go back and measure the loin eye. So again, this is just another statistic here showing that, um, that we know that uh, Fat death is a problem, and that muscle loin eye has a value in terms of um, 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 selling your, your lamb at market. And there's a lot of studies on there, a lot of literature, and uh, if anybody wants copies of any of the, the, the secondary source review or reviews, I'd be happy to share those, these data. Just let me know. So instead of, it takes time, it takes about one to four minutes to scan each animal and you have to have a good holding system and you know there's a cost involved with it you know for people's time and labor so instead of um, coming up with a model where we would go to every flock that want to participate in this co-op and scanning each and every single animal we decided to use a random sample and we uh, actually copied a methodology that was used in Ireland to do this where the actual um, uh, national industry 
um, funded a project where they went out and they did random sampling. So what we would do is we do we did for our farms we did a random sample of all of our animals, and um, uh, you know by 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 myself as a technician, we did both males and females, and um, we noted their dates before we. Um, uh, scanned our sheep. We had all of our records for our sheep and we also had weighed them that day that we scanned them. And this was all plugged into a database and uh, the graphic that you see on the um, right side of the screen, which is hard to read right here, um, um, is the, um, the sort of checklist of what the scanner brings with them, what they're responsible for, excuse me, over here, and what the um, uh, uh, producers responsible for and that's basically a holding system and warmth enough so the ultrasound equipment will work and electricity etc. So getting to our results, um, so we scanned our several flocks of lambs, randomly scanned them and this included both spring, fall and winter lamb crops from the three farms and we found that no flock had an average loin eye under 2.5 square inches so that became our standard for as a group anybody that wants to join our group you have to have a 2.5 square inch loin eye to participate in this um, it, as putting the, together these lambs to market to uh, grocery stores or, um, or restaurants in Northeast Ohio. So by setting this minimum loin eye and grouping the average lamb loin eyes together for marketing we felt that we'd accomplished our mission by creating consistent quality. Um, and then for those, in our case, we didn't have anyone, but for those who would be, have more back fat and less muscle eye, then that becomes a, a measurement by which they can look to improve their um, crop in the future with you know, various management tools. So I feel like our project was a success in terms of demonstrating the consumer our ability to produce consistent lamb from multiple producers. But I think our biggest challenge in this project was that despite showing this, and we've, we've, been, we've been doing some uh, presentations in, in Ohio and et cetera, and our biggest challenge is getting to people to make change because it's real easy to just take your crop of lambs and drop them off at the auction house and be done with it all and not be measuring all of this. So it's going to take a little bit of challenge to talk people into why they should you know, be gathering all of these data and measuring their sheep. So my closing thoughts today would be that um, I think that you know, using this tool, which is already out there being used by uh, seed stock producers, commercial flocks can really improve what they're doing and come together and market locally directly and especially those breeds like ours in our particular case were um, um, Dorsets which do aseasonal lambing. We have a really good opportunity to expand and have hothouse lambs all year round and um, what we see the next steps is really marketing lamb and continuing the marketing as the healthy red meat. There's a lot of data out there also which was in our literature review of um, you know, there have been studies how it's more flavorful and has more po positive nutritional value, et cetera. So our strength and the position to promote the market um, lays in the attributes of the lamb and making sure getting all of this literature out to, to folks who are potential consumers and then using something like this ultrasound scanning for acceptance into the co-op group of lambs that we're marketing together to make sure that we're delivering high quality product um, so that everybody has a great experience eating the lamb. And that is um, uh, what I wanted to cover today. Um, here is my contact information too, so if anybody wants any of the literature reviews or data or methodologies or information, um, feel free to contact me. The question was, do other um, uh, livestock producers use the technology of ultrasound? And I would answer that by saying that it's very common in the beef industry. And that most of the um, uh, ultrasound scanners actually do both beef and lamb, and lamb it tends to be on the side, you know, side business. So what we need to do is get more people certified to scan lambs. But it is common, it, it's, it's common practice in other countries. In England, Australia, New Zealand, everybody does it. You know, we're about 10 years behind, I would guess, from the rest of the world in our industry here. And, it, you know, it's just kind of interesting because, you know, our 
American sheep industries, the oldest livestock organization in the United States, but yet it's probably the least consumed protein that we have. No, well, everybody that we're, we've worked with is, is, is keen on moving forward. And we also are finding that some people who um, also sell to the, the auction house are saying, well, maybe we should scan to show how much better ours are than other people's. Mm -hmm. So while that's at the auction house, that's also a sort of, you know, marketing tool for them that they can say, well, we scan and we have, you know, we've got a three-point muscle eye. In fact, we have an Amish producer that, um, uh, you know, one Amish producer produce, participated in this project and another Amish producer has been asking to scan his sheep, for me to scan his sheep before they go to the auction house so he can see what the quality of his, um, of his uh, um, lambs are each year. The average rate that people are charging for um, scanning an animal is about, I'd say, seven to ten dollars an animal, and then of course, you know, the travel costs. But if you're good at this, they, you can scan them through there in about, you know, thirty seconds. When you take your test to become certified, they give you four minutes. So you figure four minutes is your worst case scenario. Um, the most important thing for making it all work is having the right handling system and not everybody has a handling system that is convenient for a scanner to keep them moving through at that rate. So that's another barrier potentially is if producers don't have a good handling system to manage the animals moving through. Oh, so what happens after you scan the animals, you're we, we, the, the animals scanned at that day have their ear tag numbers and have other data that the producer's been collecting, such as the weight of the animal that day, its birth weight, etc. And so then after the animal is scanned, um, you take the images, usually grab more than one just to be safe, and you draw an outline and you measure the actual loin eye, and then they get you know, that spreadsheet back of their animals and what their loin eye is so that um, they can say, well, my 2017 crop had, you know, an average loin eye of this, or I had a range from this to this, so why am I having these, these outliers and they can improve their production, or, you know, they can make a better informed decision and again, back to my theme of you can't manage what you can't measure. So this provides us with a lot more information, you know, considering that the ultimate product is, um, you know, meat in this particular case. I, I, we, we worked with some um, different chefs in the Cleveland area on this project to get feedback from them. So we only worked with three particular chefs, but what people are, what they're finding is it's hard to find that that quality lamb and if you need lamb and you just go buy lamb it doesn't mean you're going to get what you want necessarily because you can there's a lot of meat and I'm hearing this nationwide you know there's a lot of meat going through these auction houses that it's just a lot of back fat and not much um, not much meat so and people are so desperate for lamb because there's so little of it that they buy it, but then they're not happy with it. And so, you know, it's their credibility too as a restaurant, so they're gonna want that, that quality product. And if you sell them, I'm telling you, if you sell them one time, uh, you know, a lamb that isn't quality, then they'll never come back again. I do a lot of direct marketing off of my farm, and um, the ones that, um, uh, there's a few that don't get direct marketed, they get used for um, lamb stew and ground lamb and other dishes on the farm for the family or special occasions where we're not trying to sell the quality leg of lamb or the quality rack or, or something along those lines. So if it's not good enough to sell the customer, they'll never come back if you sell them something that's of a low quality. The question is, are the, the restaurants, yes. Well, the, my big problem, again, is supply and demand. So I need to, I think the next step is recruitment. 
you know. So I need to recruit people, and um, I have um, a friend who has hair sheep, so she's going to get me over there and said, you better start. I've never scanned his hair sheep yet, so I've got to get over there and do that next and uh, make sure that there's no practice on that before we move on. We've also been talking to um, some of the local academics, and maybe they can get involved. Right now, the National Sheep Improvement, is, Improvement um, Program is, is working on recruiting more people to get certified as scanners so that this becomes more commonplace in the industry, just like it is in the beef industry. Well, again, I would not be recommending that they try to tap that market. They might find other use for that meat, such as um, you know, a, a, a lesser quality product that, that's maybe processed, but also it's an opportunity to say, um, you know, what are some, is it management, is it, is it breeding, you know, what is it that I need to improve? So they can begin to look at their flock and say, um, you know, I better get a better ram, or maybe I need to start over, I need some better genetics, or maybe they need to have better management. Um, what they're feeding them. It could be a number of things, but at least they can identify the point, the fact that, you know, their lamb is not value added. So, so at that point, you, so you know there's an issue, and you don't just necessarily right. know what, what the issue is. Right. And the idea, too, with, with creating the co-op is that this group will get together and we're, we plan on meeting quarterly as we get people together. In, in our region and just getting together and having maybe a guest speaker or a presentation or talking about an issue and networking and sharing and mentoring. And, and so the idea is that not only will we have this tool available to everyone, um, but also that um, you know, we'd share our knowledge and how we get everybody to succeed because if everybody succeeds, then the, the individual producers uh, has a better chance as well.